God has told us in Revelation that if a person receives the mark of the beast, they will receive the seven last plagues. Am I right? All right. And then the Bible says that they will be tormented in the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Will they go to hell just because they worship on the wrong day? No. What happens is this right here. They will, people will be condemned by rejecting the truth. Am I right? That show them. That worshiping in the wrong day will lead to this consequence, and that's where the condemnation will come. And so we're told in the spirit of prophecy that the time is not far distant when the laws against what kind of labor, somebody? Will be more stringent. Now, we're getting ready to go into some articles. I mean, as you take, this, take it off the screen, Dr. McNulty, how do you see the progression of everything based on this statement here from Fundamentals of Christian Education, page 322, in terms of the progression towards sure. um, Sunday legislation being more, have more teeth in it? You can take it off the screen, brother. So, yeah, it's going to start off in a more palatable fashion to the whole world. It's not like day one, if you don't accept this, we're going to put you to death. Um, people naturally wouldn't be so thrilled about such a law, <laughs> but it's going to progress. Um, but initially, it's just going to be, we need a day of rest for the good of the earth, mm. for the planet, for the family. So from the left, it's like, hey, for the good of the planet, for the environment, and from the right, for the good of the family. And you should be going to... Um, to church, you know, I've often kind of wondered because, I mean, you know, one of the modern gods of America is, is the National Football League, and it's like, you know, what are they going to do with the NFL? I mean, are they going to shut it down? I mean, because that, that's a, that's a multi-billion-dollar industry, but presumably that will be part of it that mm -hmm. they're going to turn off football on Sunday so that people will go to church and just take a day for your family and. Um, spend time with family, spend time with God for the good, for the environment, all of that kind of thing. And so that's, that's going to be how it kind of ushers in. Now, I wanted to kind of respond a little bit to, to what you just said as well about, you know, people will, will receive the seven last plagues because they rejected the truth. Right. And one of the things to understand about that is, is that when the loud cry goes out, the loud cry is going to say that Babylon's sins have reached into heaven. Right. And at the same time, the character of God is going to illuminate the earth with his glory. So people are not going to simply hear the contrast. Hmm. They're going to see the contrast. They're going to see what it's like to be like Jesus and to follow him. And they're going to see what it's like to be part of a system whose sins have reached into heaven. Hmm. And if you're choosing to be part of a system whose sins have reached into heaven, meaning that sin has reached its full maturity and you still want that, and you don't want the movement of God with his people who are like Jesus, then there's no excuses left. That's right. Um, and so then, you know, when the Sunday law comes in and, and we give the loud cry that Babylon's sins have reached into heaven, it starts off with this push for, for the good of society, for the good of earth, for the good of family, for your own good. Take a day of rest and spend it at church where God can speak to you. Right. It reminds us of that um, Arizona, Arizona senator. I think you remember that? Mm -hmm. That she said that we ought to be fighting a bill that should cause us to rest on Sunday. So yeah. it's not far-fetched. Right. So let's go to the screen. We want to take you to our first article. Now, we understand that church and state will unite together in order to enforce this. Now, this is an article, Dr. McNulty, that came out on September the 21st. This is from Political Magazine. It says, most Republicans support declaring the United States as a Christian nation. Okay? And it says, a new polling shows the appeal and the limits of a Christian nationalist message. So for the last several years, but really this year, really this summer, we're hearing a move about Christian nationalism um, flexing their muscles. Now, it says here that Christian nationalism a belief that the United States was founded as a white Christian nation and that there is no separation of church and state is gaining stream on the right. Prominent Republican politicians have made themes critical to their message to voters in the run-up to the 2022 midterm elections. Doug Mastriano, the Republican nominee for governor in Pennsylvania, has argued that America is a Christian nation and that separation of church and state is a myth. 
Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, the Georgia hardliner, declared, quote, we need to be the party of nationalism, and I am a Christian, and I say it proudly, we should be Christian nationalists. And amidst a backlash, she doubled down and announced that she would start selling Christian nationalist shirts. Now, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, in which, in my opinion, I believe most likely will be the Republican nominee for president, he's a Roman Catholic. Yes, I, and, and that really shocked me. Seems to be flirting with Rome with Christian nationalist rhetoric. And notice this right here. It says, appeals to Christian nationalism as a long tradition in American history, though they have usually operated on the fringes. It says, but the increasingly mainstream appearance of this belief in GOP circles makes sense if you look at a new opinion survey. Make a long story short, it says here, our new University of Maryland critical issues poll suggests that declaring the United States as a Christian nation is a message that could be broadly embraced, be embraced by Republicans in the midterms and in the 2024 presidential race. And look at the numbers right here. Dr. McNulty, look what it says right here. Now, here's the funny thing. Even though most of the respondents agree it's con unconstitutional, those that believe it's unconstitutional still support the concept. So look at this right here. The Republican that would, that would not allow it, would or not allow government to declare the United States a Christian nation by a party. You see that the Republican Party has an overwhelming support towards declaring this country to be a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you this right here. Now, before I ask Dr. McDonald to the question, we follow up by asking, would you favor or oppose the United States officially declaring the United States as a Christian nation? It says the findings were striking. Overall, 62% of the respondents said they oppose such a declaration, including 83% Democrats and 39% of Republicans. Fully 61% of Republicans supported declaring the United States as a Christian nation. In other words, even though over half of Republicans previously said such a move would be unconstitutional, a majority of GOP voters would still support this declaration. You can take it off the screen, Brother Richard. What, are you, what is your commentary on that? And based on the image, based upon what we understand the image of the beast to be. Sure. So, I mean, that's prophecy fulfilling before our eyes. Now, here's the challenge that I want to throw out there. The second beast of Revelation does have two horns like a lamb. Right. So those two horns are civil and religious liberty. But those two horns, we understand as Seventh-day Adventists, have a separation of church and state. Now, there is a difference between the United States and France, for example. So there were revolutions around the same time. The American Revolution and the French Revolution happened around the same time. And the French Revolution also had separation of church and state, but it was a hostile separation. Whereas the United States had separation of church and state, but it was still based on Christian principles. That does not make us a white nationalist Christian nation. It just means that we have principles meaning that you have laws like don't kill people and don't steal and you know some some simple principles that are based on the Ten Commandments but it's not based on a state religion there's not a state religion there's not a state church but there's principles that are really Christian and it's and we see that from Revelation 13 that it starts off with two horns like a lamb and and here's the distinction the first beast of Revelation 13 has seven heads with ten horns and it has crowns on the horns meaning that church and state were united under the papacy so you have apostate Christianity known as the Roman Catholic Church state power. So in the second beast where you have two horns like a lamb, it's based on Christian principles and by definition it must be Protestant Christianity. That's right. So that's why we identify America as Protestant. So if America is a Protestant nation, by definition it's based on Christian principles. Here's, the, the, here's where things are falling apart though with the modern, modern Republican Party, and that is that they're calling for the tearing down of the separation of church and state and there must be a separation of church and state because I don't want a Presbyterian president to say you will follow the rules of the Presbyterian Church 
or a Methodist president to say you're going to follow the, the theology and the religion of the Methodist church, or a Catholic president, or a Muslim president, or whatever religion it is. There's a separation of church and state where there is not a state religion. And, what, and, and, and I'll just throw this in there, because I mean, I, I hammered both parties this morning, but look, I could tell you plenty of bad things about both sides, because you know, there's some partisans, even in a room like this, that are like, well, only the Democrats are good, or only the Republicans are good. Listen, I mean, the Democrats are pushing satanic ideology. They're pushing for the acceptance of homosexuality and for the acceptance of the murder of innocent life, babies who have heartbeats. And if we as Seventh-day Adventists are okay with that because Donald Trump is so evil, then we got to check ourselves. Now, on the other side, for those of you who are saying, well, I realize that Donald Trump's a narcissist and he says some unchristian things, but at least he doesn't promote LGBT and abortion. Well, but now we have, look at the fruit. Right. We have people who are pushing his ideology that are saying, we need to tear down church and state, the separation of church and state. So if you support the left and they're, they're promoting you know, anything goes and LGBT and we're going to take away your, your religious exempt status if you don't allow the acceptance of homosexuality in your Christian schools. And I mean, that's dragon speak too. Um, so you have that issue on the left, but then you have the right that's clearly pushing stuff that we've always said would happen. Right. My main issue is, is that, you know, I see people saying, well, I don't care if the left persecutes because at least it won't lead to the Sunday law, as if to say, come on, wait a minute. So you're saying you're okay when the Soviet Union was sending faithful Seventh-day Adventists off to Siberia where they would never see their family again and say, it's okay, at least the Soviet Union's not going to push the Sunday law, so I don't care if my Adventist brother will spend the rest of his life in a concentration camp. No, 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 no. We should be for religious liberty no matter what, and we should be against tyranny no matter which side it comes from. But we understand prophetically that the religious right is going to push the Sunday law, which is the thing that we have to look out for. So I'm just saying, don't feel too, so comfortable with the Democrats, but don't get comfortable with the Republicans either, even if we can identify with some principles as Christians. Right. But then there's other things that they do that are clearly unbiblical and clearly go against our understanding prophetically. So just be a good Seventh-day Adventist that's not a Democrat or a Repo Republican. That's the safest place to be. Amen.